Now, part of the reason for today's volatility, of course, the new questions over the state of the presidential race after the death of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the president and Senate Republicans pushing to fill that seat as quickly as possible while Democrats demand they wait in a repeat of what we saw happen in 2016. Ed Mills is Washington policy analyst at Raymond James. He joins us now. Uh, good morning, Ed. Uh, you know, there's this new poll out, a Reuters Ipsos poll that shows more than 60% of Americans want uh, lawmakers to wait on filling that vacancy until after the election. What are the chances that the GOP is able to ram something through before the election or right after? Yeah, Alexis, um, I think at this point, I think the chances are pretty high. Uh, we've seen two senators uh, so far on the Republican side come out and say that they won't confirm, uh, but you still need two more. Um, I think any tie would be broken by Vice President uh, Mike Pence. The two senators that have come out so far would have been the top two that you would expect. Uh, and for Susan Collins in Maine, uh, I think it would have been more shocking for her given how uh, close her uh, re-election fight is, and she finds herself down in the polls uh, for her to come out and say that she would support this. So uh, the base case right now uh, is that Republicans um, have a good shot at filling the seat, uh, but things are going to change extremely rapidly uh, in this fight. So nothing is certain right now in terms of the pick, in terms of the market impact, in terms of the uh, political impact. So this is a story we have to watch very closely. And justifiably so here, lots of focus uh, off of this with regards to the fate of the Affordable Care Act. Can you at least frame uh, the market risk if the Affordable Care Act is repealed? Yeah, so uh, at issue is the fact that the Supreme Court has on its docket another kind of challenge to the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. Uh, and it was based upon a lower court decision that because the individual mandate had been struck, that the whole thing should be struck down. Um, in a kind of court that included Ginsburg, I think it was clear that people thought it was going to be a 5-4 decision uh, keeping uh, the ACA. With her gone, it looks like it is going towards a 4-4 decision, or that's the immediate response. And so the lower court decision potentially striking down the whole case uh, remains. There's a lot of things that either the court or Congress could do to prevent that outcome. But what I do expect is weakness in managed care names. Uh, as I've spoken with our healthcare policy analyst, Chris Meekins, um, it's been a flood of phone calls over the weekend from Raymond James investors uh, and clients trying to figure out the market impact of that. Uh, longer term, because of this um, case, I do think that the Biden campaign is going to try to make the November election more of a referendum on healthcare. And so healthcare being in the focus, you could see underperformance overall in healthcare. And is this Supreme Court vacancy a game changer for President Trump's struggling reelection campaign? I mean, you've now got Biden uh, leading President Trump, I think by eight uh, points in some of the battleground states. Yeah, in a report we put out this morning, what we said is that it's too soon to tell. Uh, you can make a pro-Trump argument. You can make a pro-Biden argument. The pro-Trump argument is that he has been pursuing a base strategy. He does need higher turnout among supporters. Uh, the probably biggest thing to get turnout among Republican base voters is a vacancy on the Supreme Court. However, there is a chance that it is going to be viewed based upon what you said on that Reuters uh, poll, uh, that it is going to be viewed as overly partisan. Uh, Democrats have seen a massive influx of fundraising uh, since the passing, passing of Ruth Bader Ginsburg and could see energy on their side. So I think uh, we could look too much into exactly the impact of this. Uh, we have to see how the next steps play out before we have a good tell of how this is impacting the presidential election. So on Fox this morning, President Trump says he expects to have his pick named either Friday or Saturday. On the short list, two female judges, Amy Coney, Coney Barrett and Barbara Lagoa, both uh, conservative, both Roman Catholic. But when you look at these two women, does Lagoa uh, paint a, a more positive picture for Trump because she hails from Trump's must-win state of Florida. She's also of Cuban descent, which could hit, uh, help him with Latino uh, voters, which we know right now are swinging Biden's way. Yeah, so for Lagoa, I think it, if you are looking at it from a purely political lens, um, 
Florida is a must win state for President Trump. And when you look at the cross tabs of polling data, the area that he is doing better than probably expected is with Cuban American voters in the state of Florida. That certainly could help him there. And then importantly, uh, Lagoa got her confirmation in the Senate uh, pretty recently in a very partisan environment. And it was 85 votes in favor of her, her confirmation. Uh, what I have heard is there's some concerns within conservative circles about her record because it's not um, very robust yet. And so they don't necessarily know what they are getting either on the conservative or liberal side with Lagoa. So that could be one of the few reasons that could you know, hold Trump back in making that selection. But she is someone absolutely to watch. All right. Much to be uh, seen here in the coming days. Ed Mills of Raymond James. Thank you. Thanks, Elijah. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up to the minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.